Hi, I'm Sam Pappas, an engineer with Intec Anchoring Systems. Today we're going to be talking about the difference between helicals and uh, hollow bar micropiles. So there's two main ways that a pile gets its capacity, either through skin friction along the sides of the pile or through end bearing. And that's the main difference between a helical pile and a micropile. A helical pile is going to be getting its capacity through end bearing on the plates, whereas a hollow bar micropile is going to be getting its capacity through skin friction along the entire length of the pile. So with that, there's going to be some differences on the spacing requirements for the two pile types. Each of them are going to adhere to a three diameter spacing, but a hollow bar micropile diameter is going to be based on your grout diameter, which is typically anywhere from four to eight inches, and a helical pile is going to be based on the plate diameter, which is going to be anywhere from six to 14 inches. So as we discussed, a helical pile gets its capacity through end bearing on these helical plates. As the pile gets loaded, the load is transmitted down the shaft onto these plates. When these plates load the soil, it creates a pressure bulb that goes out at a two to one slope from these plates and typically is terminated uh, at about two diameters down from where the load is applied. So as a result of this, you don't want these stress bulbs to interact with each other. So a recommended spacing of three diameters eliminates this, uh, this interaction of your stress bulbs and makes sure that your pile gets the capacity that you intend it to. So like we talked about, hollow bar micro piles are skin friction piles. So as they're installed, grout gets continuously pumped through these holes during the installation, and you're left with a grout column that is at least the size of your bit. Typically, the grout permeates the surrounding soils, and this grout column will be oversized as compared to your bit, but it is designed for the size of your bit. So as the bar gets loaded, that bar, through adhesion to the grout surrounding it, will bond to that grout and then load the grout. The grout then transmits that load in the surrounding soils via skin friction. So essentially you're left with a bar that's bonded to the grout and then grout that's bonded to the soil. As a result of this skin friction loading, there is gonna be no stress bulb created into the soil. However, you still wanna space them at three diameters apart just to make sure you're taking advantage of any of that improved soil between your piles. And you're also making sure that you're not gonna have any issues with any sort of lateral, lateral effects of piles that are spaced too closely. When it comes to selecting whether a helical pile or a hollow ball micro pile is going to be better for your particular project, that's the two most important things are going to be what is the load and what are the soil conditions. For soils that are free of any uh, you know, tremendous obstructions like large cobbles or existing footings, boulders, uh, helicals could be a good option. Or whenever you have those obstructions, you may want to switch to a micro pile that is going to be able to drill through those a little bit better. And the second piece of that is the load. For light to moderate loads, helicals are a good option. Whenever the load becomes moderate to high or even very high, thinking about switching to a hollow bar micropile, or if you have shallow bedrock conditions paired with those high loads, a micropile is going to be a good option in those cases. If you have any questions about your particular project, feel free to reach out to us through our website at intechanchoring.com, and we can help you figure out whether helicals or micropile is going to be the best fit for your particular project.